Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of my RC show. Today we have another jet. This plane is from Banana Hobbies and it is an airfield brand. It is the F-16 fighter jet. Now this is a fairly large jet, has a 30.7 inch wingspan and a 48.5 inch fuselage from nose to tail. Um, comes with a four cell battery, which I actually don't have in here. I opted to get this plane without a battery. I'll be using my own battery. Um, and it also comes, this is a receiver ready version, so it comes with no receiver uh, and no transmitter. Now you can get this with the receiver and transmitter if you, if you choose to. Let's go ahead and unbox it, and I'm going to do everything in this video. We'll have some uh, sped up video, so we're going to get through it quicker than as if I was doing it just at normal speed. But what we're going to do is we're going to unbox it for you guys here, then we're going to build it all right in front of you, right here, right now. So let's see what's in the box. First I'll just show you real quick. Here's the main fuselage and it takes up the whole box. It's a nice large fuselage. Now this plane is, and when we, when we get it out of the box we'll see, but it's, I would say it's about the same size as the Habu. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it also comes with a, let me check on the thing here, yeah, a 70 millimeter ducted fan. Now the Habu has a 69 millimeter ducted fan, I think, right about the same size. I do expect the Habu to have more power, but we'll see how this flies when we get it out. See if there's an opening in this plastic, yeah there is. Now this plane comes actually with four complete channels. Some of Nitro planes, jets and other planes will say they're four channels, but the fourth channel is just a steerable nose wheel. This one actually does have a rudder. It looks like the plastic was a little melted on to the uh, back cone there. It's weird. But it came off okay, not very pretty. So uh, here's the main fuselage, and I'm going to be taking off this connector which goes to the ESC. It's one of those banana connectors. I'll be putting on an EC3. Um, but as you can see here, we have everything actually pre-set up. Now the control arms are not added for everything. As you can see, there's no control arms because the elevators aren't here yet, um, and the rudder's not on yet. But the servos do come pre-installed. Uh, in here is where our wheels go, and these wheels, there's no screws as far as I know pretty sure that these just snap in with these little uh, levers, which I'll show you up close later when we put them in. Uh, we have a steerable nose wheel, but like I said, we also have a rudder, so that's right here. I hope I have an Allen wrench that fits in there. Hopefully I might have came with one too. Let's check that really quick. Uh, looks like I got a good size one right there. Might work. So that's the fuselage, and you know, it looks pretty nice. We have a nice big area here for the uh, battery. Hopefully I can fit a big enough battery in there. I might actually have to dig into that foam a little bit because I plan on using uh, the Habu battery, which I know won't fit in here. Let's take a look. Habu battery is going to hit the uh, servo right here. I do have some other batteries on the way that are a little smaller, so I might just use those. But if I want to use that Habu battery, I'll just have to dig up in there a little bit, which wouldn't be too hard. So there's the main fuselage. Looks pretty nice. And this back section here actually pulls off completely. It's magnetic on the front, and then there's just two screws here that hold on a plastic part. And that actually opens up the whole body here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it right now, to sh but I, I might do it later in the video. That opens up the whole body so you can see the fan unit, see the ESC, and you can get in there and work on it or change out parts if you want to. Let's put down the fuselage here. And let's keep going through the box. Here we have our canopy or hatch. And there's actually a little pilot in there. It's kind of tinted. I don't know if you can see, but you know, a nice little scale pilot in there. The plane actually looks pretty nice. And it's held on by four magnets. And it's going to just snap right onto there. It feels fairly tight, not too bad. Alright. We have some uh, missiles here. 
which they're just white. They don't really look like missiles to me, um, but usually they're just white or red or some weird color. I'm probably not going to put these on. They usually just uh, you know, provide more drag, which you don't want. It's going to slow down your plane. So I'm probably not going to put these on. I'm actually going to just place these back here. But if you want to put those on for a more scale look, you can. Have a completely plastic nose cone here. Feels really weak and wobbly. Um, but that just gets glued onto the front of the plane. Uh, should be all right unless you crash in the nose at all, then it's just going to get all bent up. But it's your nose cone. Completely hollow and very bendy. Here we are landing gear. And you know, it looks like it has nice strong metal. The metal is pretty thick and feels pretty strong. So there's our landing gear. I'm going to take it out of the bag here, get everything out of the bag, because like I said, I'm going I'm to build it right here on this video for you guys. Once I get this out of the box, we're going to start building it in fast motion. Here we have some control arms and push rods and an aileron wrench. Not aileron wrench, Allen wrench. Or hex wrench, whatever you call it. Some more missiles. Again, probably not going to use them. If I want to add them on later, I can. Here we have our rudder. And it comes with the uh, control arm on. So these control arms that are down here, it looks like I have two, probably for the uh, ailerons there. But it comes with nice uh, hinges, actually. They're plastic. They don't look super strong but it's better than just tape or something else. But they are just plastic hinges in there. But there's the uh, horizontal vertical stab and the uh, rudder there. Have our instruction manual. I don't know if I said this, this is just glue and probably won't use any of it because I'm just going to use my CA. Oh, this two-part glue. Not labeled in any way, completely blank, but there's Make sure you uh, mix glue A and B, put them on, wait 10 minutes. So these two different bottles, you mix them together, and you glue. Probably not going to use those glues, but we'll see. Got some tape here, holding these two together. So here are my wings with ailerons, and you know, oh, I was wrong. Those control arms must be for the, uh, or linkages must be for the elevators because it barely fits in the bag. Because these uh, wings with ailerons already pre-installed. Your control arms, your servo, everything pre-installed. So that's nice. Real quick and easy to build that way. So there's one. because, you know, I'm just taking things out of the box. This is an elevator, a horizontal stab and an elevator. This is not a vertical stab and a rudder. This is the elevator because right here, quite obviously, is the vertical stab with the rudder. And it comes with the control arm in. I only have to put those on the elevators and you just got to attach the push rod to here. So here's my rudder, and you know, looks nice. And then in this side of the box, I didn't even see it before because I mixed, blended in real quick. I mean, easy for that side of the white box. Hope myself. Here's my other elevator. And like I said, that's I didn't get the uh, transmitter or receiver, nor did I get the battery or the charger, because I have all that. Now, they don't really take off all that much money for the transmitter and receiver. They only take off 15 bucks, I think. The charger, they only take off 5 bucks. 
which is weird because the battery, the battery, if you decide to take it out, they only take out 15 bucks. But if you want to add a second battery, they charge you like an additional 70 bucks. So uh, it's not very equal there, <laughs> but that's how it works. I decided to take it out because I don't, I don't need it. I don't want to use their uh, battery. So now the box is empty. Just the uh, plastic bags I threw in there are left. <coughs> so I'm going to be adding the AR500 receiver by Spectrum to this rate to this uh, jet. Uh, so that'll be my receiver. And uh, you know, there's really not that many parts. This probably won't take that long. I think I'm going to add on the wheels first and uh, let's get going. I'm going to stop talking because this is all going to be in fast motion now. So here we go. Let's build the jet. Last thing I'll say, I probably don't need this, but I'm going to look at it anyways. I'm going to use this more as a the instruction manual. I'm going to use more as a glue cover for my table, even though I kind of messed up my table anyways a little bit. Um, but I'm going to use it as more of a glue cover. And I'm going to put the wheels on first so we got a nice base to work with. And then let's get it going.
Alright guys, so um, I have some extra parts here, some control arms and some linkage things. Maybe they're just uh, extras because I don't need them. Um, so here we go. Now I had one mess up on the whole build. Luckily it's not the foam, you know, it's not a big deal. But if you look at my top hatch here, I hold on pretty good. When I put on my top hatch, when I put my plate upside down, my top hatch hit a little bit of glue. Got a little paper on it. So I'm gonna have to just scrape this off carefully. Maybe some goo gone or something will take that off. Maybe nail polish remover will help that. Yeah, that's the only mess up I had. Just a little bit of a glue and some paper got stuck to the top of my hatch. But other than that, you know, I wasn't timing it, but I'm gonna look at the video afterwards and I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how long this took. I'll put an annotation. This probably took 10 minutes. Oh, I, I didn't do one thing. Uh, but here it is. Okay. Pretty big, too. And look at how tall this is. Let's start it at my waist here. I'm going up way past my head from my waist. I mean, let me put it on the ground. It's touching the ground and it's going up to, well, my nipple. <laughs> it's about how high it's going. So, uh, it's a pretty, pretty tall plane. It's, you know, like I said, it's got a uh, 48 inch. Uh, fuselage there, so 48 inch, that's 4 feet, uh, 48 and a half. My left control, my left aileron is a little lower than my right over here. So instead of trimming it on the controller, which you can do and you should do in the air, beforehand, these rods right here, these will twist. So this one's a little too high, so I would take it out of here. See where it comes out? It comes out this way. If I can do this with one hand in front of you guys here. Oh, it goes the other way. Jeez. Alright, so that one was too high, so I'd want to bring it closer to me, so that would be righty-tighty. So I'm going to spin it right, let's say, four times here. And now let's try it, that might have only been three times, but that's okay. Now let's try putting this in. Okay. Looks a lot more level, maybe a little bit down actually, I might want to unloosen that one. But I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick to both of them uh, before I fly. I'm not going to actually do it, waste more time right now. But um, I'll do that before I fly, of course. And then when you fly, you trim on your remote. But you want to have everything centered on your remote and get those as good as you can beforehand. Now remember, when you've got your thing trimmed, just because they look perfectly straight on there, it doesn't mean your plane's going to fly straight. That's why in the air you trim. But you get them as close to perfect as you can before you fly the first time, and then you do your minor trim on the controller when you go. So that probably took less than a half an hour for sure. Maybe only 15 minutes, honestly. And we've got everything done. The only thing I need to do is that nose wheel looks straight. Nose wheel is definitely a good amount off too. I'm going to have to work with that. I might have to... I, there's an adjustment inside of here. Is there an adjustment? Hmm. There's an adjustment for the rudder 
doesn't look like there's an adjustment much for the nose wheel, but I think I can change that by unscrewing and twisting this. So that's what I'll do for that, because it's definitely not center at all, but I have to have it and my rudder pretty much equal so they work in sync. But um, there you go. That is the F-16 Fighter by uh, Airfield, and it's from Nitro Plan or it's from Banana Hobby, and um, you know it looks pretty good actually. Uh, the last thing I have to do, like I said, is change out this banana connector so I can use my EC3s with them. But uh, it looks okay. It went together quick, and we'll see how it flies soon. Now uh, I'm hoping it flies great, but we'll just see. I haven't honestly had the best luck with Banana Hobby's planes or jets before. I really don't recommend the company to anyone. Um, I've tried out a few and I've done it for my own reasons to try them and to show you guys who watch my videos how they fly and honestly I've been a lot more happy with Horizon Hobby and Tower Hobby products. Um, but this one actually is looking okay. It's looking like it should be alright but we'll see how it flies. So keep a lookout for a flight video. It'll come soon and uh, I'll just show you guys real quick again what it looks like. All put together here. Look at that elevator throw. It looks like it has a pretty good amount. Might give it even more though. I like to have a lot of elevator throw because I don't always trust them to be enough. Got our rudder. And our power. Actually feels kind of strong on the three cell. So how many amp ESC does this have? This has a pretty sure it just, it just says brushless ESC on the package. I'm pretty sure it's a 45 amp, uh, the same type of ESC that came in my AMX jet, and it runs on a four cell with its 45 amp, not watt, 45 amp. Um, and this plane, I'm pretty sure, is meant for a four cell. I'm gonna have to look that up. So this battery right here, yeah, 14.8 volts, so it is meant for a four cell. I've got 11.1 .1 in there. The 11.1's feeling kind of strong. <laughs> But with an EDF jet, you need a lot of power, uh, or you're going to have stall tendencies, all types of stuff. So the four cell is going to be needed. I'm not going to try to fly this on a three cell. We're going to go completely stock setup. The only difference from stock is I'm not going to be using their battery, but I'm going to have the exact same battery. I, I don't think I'm going to use the Habu battery because it doesn't fit in there. I have some 2100 uh, four cells coming. They've got 120C and 130C, so um, I'll be putting those in there, and they should fit perfectly, the 2100s. I think one might be a 2200. But they're the stock battery, basically, same specs. So uh, we'll get this jet in the air for you guys soon, and hopefully we have better luck than some of the last uh, Nitro planes and Banana Hobby jets I've uh, purchased. Like I said, it looks okay, so uh, see you guys soon.